because I'm supposed to be here. Welcome. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. We had our first one, and it was such a, such a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the birth of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, holy night. It was not any kind of night, but it was one of the most special ones in, in history. Why? Because God became flesh. He was among us. Amen? We're glad that you're here with us. You, you clean up well. You, some of you look so sharp. I mean, I, I don't even recognize you. You know what I mean? None of the things. I mean that in a good way. Will you please do me a favor? Before we do continue, stand up and make a new friend by asking them, what are you going to give me for Christmas? Okay, everybody? Will you please stand up? Everybody, come on. Up we go and just make a new friend and say, what are you getting me for Christmas? How is that? mystery of the coming of Jesus, where God the Father sent His Son, conceived by the Holy Spirit. So let us praise this triune God together. Praise the Father, praise the Son. Will you stand up, remain standing and sing the three and
That is the mighty God that we praise. Everybody, everybody, come on, let's praise the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who brought joy to the world. Come on. We have a reason to rejoice. Yes, that's right. He has come. He's arrived. love those lyrics that talk about the wonders of his love. Isn't it cool to really think about that and imagine the wonders of his love? When you have experienced the love of God personally, we really then do have a reason to sing, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Yes, the beauty of those words, joy has come to the world and his name is Jesus. God in flesh. He came as a baby. I can't even wrap my, hand, my head around that. Yeah, and the Bible talks about it in the book of John. The Bible says that the Word became flesh and lived with us. Have you ever paused to really think about that? Why? Why would Jesus come in such a humble and human way? Yeah, Jesus left the splendor and grandeur of heaven to be born in a humble stable. And think of this, the one who created the world, the one who owns every corner of it, couldn't find room in an inn. Yet God had a perfect plan. He had prepared a humble manger's stable. 
for the Savior of the world to be born. And now, more than anything else, Jesus desires a deeply personal relationship with each and every one of us as our Savior and Lord. He is pursuing us to make room in our lives for him to be Lord over it all. And so today, the question for us to consider is this. Will we make room in our hearts for him? Yes. A family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door It was for this a child was born Save a world so cold and hollow A sleeping town it did not know Lying in a manger low A savior king who had no home Has come to heal our sorrow It is there Christmas, everyone. We're so excited. Thank you for those few. Appreciate that. Hold it back. Hey, I'm Pastor Mike, kids pastor here at Woodland. And now we come to my...
favorite part of the Christmas Eve service. It's like a tradition where we invite the kids to come up front for a Christmas story reading. And so that's what we're going to do right now. So if you are actually in second grade and in, in three years old, so we got three years, four years old, all the way up to eight years old. If that is you in this room, I invite you to come right now in the front of this uh, floor here and grab a seat if you would. If your parents are feel comfortable, you want to make your way down here right now for this awesome time as I read the Christmas story, you guys, please feel free to come down here and take a seat. We'd love to have you guys join us today. It's awesome. Bashful. Take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Take some carpet there. You're four? That's great. I'm not. Sit down. Sit down. That's good. Eight? That's awesome. Yep. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. A lot of us there. All right. So here's the Christmas story for us today. I'll read it for you. An angel came down from God to say, Mary will have a baby on Christmas Day. His name will be Jesus, God's only son, to show that God loves everyone. Mary and Joseph traveled on a donkey far, far away. When they got to Bethlehem, there was no place to stay. God gave them a stable filled with cows and sheep, Jesus was born on the hay he did sleep. Now the shepherds were watching their sheep at night. An angel came and caused a great fright. I'm so scared. But don't be afraid. I have good news. For Jesus is born for you, 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 and you, 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 you. Everyone. Absolutely. The angels sang, the shepherds ran to see the baby God sent to man. It was the best news they have ever heard. So they hurried off to spread the word. The wise men came on camels, following a special star. All the way to Jesus, they came from afar. They knocked on his door, then they knelt on the floor and worshiped the one we all shall adore. They gave their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh to the little boy, and everyone's heart was filled with joy. For Jesus is God's only son, the greatest gift for everyone. And that is so true because Christmas is the celebration of the greatest gift ever, and that is Jesus. And Jesus is for everyone. Just think of how he is born in such a weird, strange place. Jesus is supposed to be the king of kings, and yet a king to be born in a smelly barn with baba sheep and moo cows? That's strange. And yet, the stinky shepherds out in the fields, the poor, people didn't like them very much. But they were the first ones to see the Lord of Lords. How crazy is that? Why? Because it shows us that Jesus is for everyone. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. You hear that? Everyone. So Jesus came for not just me, but for you. He didn't come for the rich or for the poor, the healthy, the sick, for he came for everyone. And so that's what we celebrate today on Christmas. So guys, Merry Christmas to you and have a great year. You guys can go back to your seats. Thanks, Mike. Baba sheep and moo moo cows. He said it so naturally too, didn't he? I mean, it's just so natural. That's a great children's minister for you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, thanks for bringing your entire families out tonight. It's so good to have you. I'm Tim. I'm the pastor here at Woodland. And I'm so excited that I wore a sweater this year for Christmas Eve and I actually needed it. Isn't it great? I mean, it's just so incredible to be here on a cold Christmas Eve night, and we're so grateful that you're here. This is our time of offering. I'm going to ask our ushers, if you will, to go ahead and begin passing those plates. We appreciate your investments and the ministries that are taking place here at Woodland. We have a lot going on, and there are some things that we want to invite you to that are coming up in the new year. In fact, uh, our host for our different sections gave you uh, not only a candle and some other things, but they gave you an information card about some events that are coming up. One is on January the 20th. We're having a big movie night in the park in our brand new Woodland Community Park back in the back. If you haven't checked it out yet, we hope you'll come to be a part of that. And we're having an exciting night of worship that'll be having, that we'll be uh, having together here in our worship center on January the 25th. So please make sure you put those dates on your calendars and be looking to see the many other opportunities that you have to get engaged here at Woodland and Ministry. We are here to celebrate the Savior 
He is the Savior of the world. So let's continue our worship right now. Yes, our Lord is the Savior. If you can please stand. Sing on, oh. about that a child who is also a king lord of everything 
who brought hope for everyone. That's so powerful to think about, that the king of heaven would come for us to bring us hope. And that's why Christmas time is such a special time for us, because we are reminded of the greatest gift, Jesus, for our greatest need, salvation. Yes, and oh, what a wonderful, wonderful king and savior he is. You know, just thinking about my own life, and life isn't easy. A lot of grief and sorrow along the journey. And I know in a room this size, there's a lot of hard circumstances that are, that are going on right now. But can I just testify for a moment about a king and a savior named Jesus? The best. He provides healing. He provides truth. He provides salvation. He provides deliverance. And he provides love like you have never, ever felt before in your life. He holds the world in his hands, and he tells the oceans to stop where it does. He's the lifter of our heads and the healer of our hearts. And in heaven there is a song that is sung day and night, Revelation says. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He is only good and he's only righteous. He can be trusted and he can't lie and he can't sin and he will never deceive you ever. He is the only holy and good God that there is. His biggest desire is for every single one of us to live with him in eternity where love, joy, and peace is the lifestyle. Amen. Amen. And you know, in the Bible, they called him Emmanuel, which simply means God with us. And that's a reality for every one of us who call him our Lord, our Savior, and our faithful friend. He's there with us to lead us, guide us, encourage us, counsel us, inspire us, and love us like only he can. Not only for the rest of our lives here on earth, but for all of eternity. Yes. And that's some pretty good news. Amen.
Light comes when love is given. And darkness comes when hatred is shown. When we think about our world, we understand that we live in a very dark place. But light can come if we choose to bring it. But how does it come? It comes when we do what we need to do to bring peace. We've been learning there are many names for Jesus. And one of those is so prevalent at this time of year that we hear. He is the Prince of Peace. So what does that mean? How do we experience peace? Peace comes when love is shown. Love is the key to peace. So how do I understand this sense of peace? Where does this peace come from? Well, peace comes when love is experienced. When it's experienced personally. When I feel love, I feel a sense of peace within me. All of us can feel this peace. In fact, we feel this sense of peace through the love given to us, a love that's shown to us, a love that we don't deserve. When someone does something for us because they care about us, even though we've done nothing for that person to love us, they still care about us. And all of us can know exactly how that feels. How do I know? Because it's been done for all of us. Someone showed love to every one of us, none of us who deserved it. And it came through a little boy that was born in a manger. And his name is Jesus, the Savior of the world. It was this Jesus who would live his life to show love to people around him, to meet the needs when he saw a need, to help people who were discouraged become encouraged, to help people who were hateful, people to understand that they were loved even though, that, even though they were hateful, that God still loved them through his reaching out and spending time with them and to heal them in their place of hurting. That's what Jesus did. But he did something even greater. Even though this man spent his entire life doing good for other people, there were many people who spent their time doing bad toward him to silence him because they feared their own position. They were sinful people. They arrested him, put him on a cross, and he died for no reason of his own. So why did he die? Why did he allow himself to be placed on that cross to be put to death? Because there was a reason for him to be on the cross. It wasn't to die for what he had done wrong. It was to die for everything that all of us have done wrong. That's where love is felt. When someone does something for us that we don't deserve. And he did it for all of us. Don't you feel the love? Don't you feel the compassion of a Savior who came to do that for us? That was the gift. He did something for us as a gift. He took our place. He took the penalty for what we did wrong as a gift. And all we must do is accept what he did for us. Nothing that we can do can go back and erase from the history books this act of Jesus that he did for us. What's so interesting about it is the death of Jesus isn't just recorded in the history of the Bible. It's recorded in other history books known to other men. What makes it personal for us is that he did it for a reason. So that we could come to know our Father. The Son, Jesus, came to die to remove the sin that keeps us from having a relationship with God if we'll just allow him to take our place. The Bible tells us really good news. It tells us this, whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. Will be saved from being separated from God. Will be saved from having a life without purpose. Will be saved 
by having a relationship with this God who loved us enough to send us a Savior if we just accept it. Have you? That's what we've heard through our dialogue tonight, through the songs that have been sung. It's all pointing to one thing, that Jesus is the gift that we all need. But have we accepted the gift that we all need? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes right now. It may be that you have not accepted what Jesus has done for you by giving his life for you to take the place for you so that we could be forgiven and know God. And I want to help you right now pray a simple prayer of acceptance and of commitment that allows us to be a child of God. I want you to imagine right now God sitting on his throne and I would encourage you just to say these words to him silently. Say this, dear God, I know you love me and I don't deserve it. Thank you for sending Jesus to take my place and to die for my sins and to come back to life and to defeat death forever. Thank you for doing that for me. I accept what you did for me, Jesus, on the cross. And I commit my life to follow you as my Lord. Help me to love others as you have loved me. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If we mean this and we pray this, y'all, it changes everything because we're a part of a new family. I don't know what it's like with you and your family, but meals are a big part of our family. Actually, God established a meal to represent his family. It's called the Lord's Supper. Some of you may know it as communion. And it represents what it is that we believe about this one who came for us. There was Jesus. He's in the upper room with his disciples, and he talks with them about what he is anticipating to come. He had not been put on the cross yet. It was coming, and he wanted them to know why it was happening. He was going to have a body that would be broken and pierced and blood that would be shed for the forgiveness of mankind, to show love like it's never been shown before because he did it for all of us. We need to remember that he did that for us. As you came in today, you were given a little cup. I want you to take that out right now and peel off the top of it. You'll find there the bread on the very top. Underneath that will be uh, the juice that we'll be using for this time. If you're a Christian, if you've given your life to God, you may have just prayed it just a moment ago. Welcome to the family, to the first meal. How's that? To remind us about what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. I'm going to ask you, if you will, to take the bread as we prepare to remember what he's done for us through his sacrifice. The Lord's Supper is given to us to celebrate in the memory of the broken body and the shed blood of our Savior Jesus. It's said on the night before he was betrayed and at the conclusion of the feast of the Passover, which he and his disciples were celebrating, that he took bread and having blessed it, He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you. The Bible says this, that he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, of what he would do for us. Well, let's do that now. I'm going to ask you, if you will, to repeat after me these words. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. I will remember his broken body. I will remember his broken body. On that same night, the Lord took the cup. He blessed it and he gave it to his disciples and said this. This is my blood which was shed for you. The Bible says that after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take it. And divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. I ask you to repeat after me these words. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. I will remember the blood he shed for me. I will remember the blood he shed for me. 
Father God, I thank you so much for the gift of Jesus, a Savior who changed everything. And may we never forget what has been done for us in love. And may we be the children that you desire to be like our Savior, to show that love to the world. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace comes not only when love is experienced, peace comes when love is felt, that we have a compassion within us for those people that we know, a love that is so great that it causes us to care for others and even a willingness to forgive those people who've harmed us. But peace also comes not only when it's felt, but when it's shown when we become the hands and feet of Jesus ourselves. When we are people who see the needs of those around us and we meet those needs, light is shown through the love that is given. When someone is going through a heartbreak and is discouraged and we are present and are encouraging with them, light is shown because our, our love is given. But when people are hateful toward us, and say things to us, and do things to harm us, yet we still care. A light comes on when we show love to the very people who even hate us. Because that's what changes a heart, changes a life, and changes a world. And Jesus called us to be those people. In the book of Matthew, we read these words. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. And then he said, In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. I'm going to ask those who are helping us tonight in the lighting of our candles, if you'll come at this time. It's time for us to light up the world. It's time for us to light up the world through our good deeds, done out of love to help bring peace between those we know and the God who loves them. But for us to do it, we must act. For us to do it, we must care. And for us to do it, we must share our love to a world that so desperately needs it. May our light shine with the love of Christ, our Savior.
Let's all stand together as we continue singing. Let's all raise our candles in commitment of showing the good news of God's love to this world. If you're committed to do that, say amen. 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 May we be a light to everyone around us. Say that with me. May we be a light to everyone around us. Isn't it as cool as grits, y'all? <laughs> Thank y'all so much for being here tonight. You may blow out your candle. We're so grateful that you're here tonight. As we dismiss, I want to encourage you to, uh, to help us out as you uh, take the candles out and put them in their place and any of the cups that are left, if you'll take that, that would be great. We want to leave today with a song of challenge about going into the world, and I want to remind you like I do every year, you just committed to show God's love, do it in the parking lot. God loves you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. We'll see you soon. Come on, right here. Hey! All right, we're gonna go tell it. Are you ready to go tell it? Let's do it. Shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, the show.
tell it. Gonna tell it. Here we go. One more time. We're gonna go tell it.